Joshua 4 Now it happened when all the nation had completed crossing the Jordan, that Yahweh spoke to Joshua, saying, Take for yourselves twelve men from the people, one man from each tribe, and command them, saying, Carry for yourselves twelve stones from here out of the middle of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet are standing firm, and carry them over with you, and lay them down in the lodging place where you will lodge tonight. So Joshua called the twelve men whom he had appointed from the sons of Israel, one man from each tribe. And Joshua said to them, Cross again before the ark of Yahweh your God into the middle of the Jordan, and each of you carry a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Israel, in order that this would be a sign among you, so that when your children ask later, saying, What do these stones mean to you? Then you shall say to them, Because the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of Yahweh when it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall become a memorial to the sons of Israel forever. Thus the sons of Israel did as Joshua commanded, and carried twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, just as Yahweh spoke to Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Israel. And they carried them over with them to the lodging place and laid them down there. But Joshua set up twelve stones in the middle of the Jordan, at the place where the feet of the priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant were standing, and they are there to this day. Now the priest who carried the Ark were standing in the middle of the Jordan until everything was completed that Yahweh had commanded Joshua to speak to the people, according to all that Moses had commanded Joshua, and the people hurried and crossed. And it happened, when all the people had completed crossing, that the ark of Yahweh and the priest crossed before the people. And the sons of Reuben and the sons of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh crossed over in battle array before the sons of Israel, just as Moses had spoken to them. About forty thousand equipped for war crossed for battle before Yahweh to the desert plains of Jericho. About forty thousand equipped for war crossed for battle before Yahweh to the desert plains of Jericho. On that day, Yahweh magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel, so that they feared him, just as they had feared Moses all the days of his life. Then Yahweh said to Joshua, Command the priests who carry the ark of the testimony that they come up from the Jordan. So Joshua commanded the priests, saying, Come up from the Jordan. So it happened, when the priest who carried the ark of the covenant of Yahweh had come up from the middle of the Jordan, and the soles of the priest's feet were lifted up to the dry ground that the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and went over all its banks as before. Now the people came up from the Jordan on the tenth of the first month and camped at Gilgal on the eastern edge of Jericho. In those twelve stones which they had taken from the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. Then he said to the sons of Israel, When your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean? Then you shall make your children know, saying, Israel crossed this Jordan on dry land. For Yahweh your God dried up the waters of the Jordan before you until you had crossed, just as Yahweh your God had done to the Red Sea, which he dried up before us until we had crossed, that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of Yahweh is strong, so that you may fear Yahweh your God forever. Psalm 129, A Song of Ascents Many times they have assailed me from my youth up. Let Israel now say, Many times they have assailed me from my youth up, yet they have not prevailed against me. The plowers plowed upon my back, they lengthened their furrows. Yahweh is righteous, he has cut up the cords of the wicked. Let all who hate Zion be put to shame and turned backward. Let them be like grass upon rooftops, which dries up before it grows up with which the reaper does not fill his hand, nor the binder of sheaves the fold of his garment. And those who pass by will not say, The blessing of Yahweh be upon you. We bless you in the name of Yahweh. Psalm 130, A Song of Ascents Out of the depths I called to you, O Yahweh. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you should keep iniquities, O Yah, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I hope for Yahweh, my soul does hope, and for his word I do wait. My soul waits for the Lord, more than the watchman for the morning. 
the watchman for the morning. O Israel, wait for Yahweh, for with Yahweh there is loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption. It is he who will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Psalm 131, a song of ascents of David. O Yahweh, my heart is not exalted, and my eyes are not raised high, and I do not involve myself in great matters, or in matters too marvelous for me. Surely I have soothed and quieted my soul, like a weaned child with his mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, wait for Yahweh from now until forever. Isaiah 64 O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as fire kindles the brushwood, as fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things for which we did not hope, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. For from ancient times they have not heard or given ear, nor has the eye seen a God besides you who acts in behalf of the one who waits for him. You meet him who rejoices and does righteousness, who remembers you in your ways. Behold, you are angry. Indeed, we have sinned. We continued in them a long time, and shall we be saved? For all of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy garment, and all of us wither like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind carry us away. There is no one who calls on your name, who awakens himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have melted us into the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Yahweh, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you our potter. And all of us are the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, O Yahweh, nor remember iniquity forever. Behold, look now, all of us are your people. Your holy cities have become a wilderness. Zion has become a wilderness. Jerusalem a desolation. Our holy and glorious house, where our fathers praised you, has been burned by fire. And all our precious things have become a waste place. Will you restrain yourself at these things, O Yahweh? Will you keep silent and afflict us beyond measure? Matthew 12 at that time Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples became hungry and began to pick the heads of grain and eat. But when the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, Look, your disciples do what is not lawful to do on a Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did when he became hungry, he and his companions, how he entered the house of God and they ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for him to eat nor for those with him, but for the priest alone? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priest in the temple break the Sabbath and are innocent? But I say to you that something greater than the temple is here. But if you had known what this means, I desire compassion and not a sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. And departing from there he went into their synagogue, and behold, a man was there whose hand was withered. And they questioned Jesus, saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him? And he said to them, What man is there among you who has a sheep, and if it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable, then, is a man than a sheep? So then, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and it was restored to normal, like the other. But going out, the Pharisees took counsel together against him as to how they might destroy him. But Jesus, aware of this, withdrew from there. Many followed him, and he healed them all, and warned them not to make him known, in order that what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet would be fulfilled, saying, Behold, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall proclaim justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A battered reed he will not break off, and a smoldering wick he will not put out, until he leads justice to victory, and in his name the Gentiles will hope. Then a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute was brought to Jesus, and he healed him, 
so that the mute man spoke and saw. And all the crowds were astounded and were saying, Can this man really be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, This man does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. And knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and any city or house divided against itself will not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebul cast out demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? For this reason they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can anyone enter the strong man's house and carry off his property unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house? He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. Therefore I say to you, any sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit shall not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven him, either in this age or in the age to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak what is good? For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. The good man brings out of his good treasure what is good, and the evil man brings out of his evil treasure what is evil. But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered and said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation eagerly seeks for a sign, and yet no sign will be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up with this generation at the judgment, and will condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up with this generation at the judgment and will condemn it, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, something greater than Solomon is here. Now when the unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it unoccupied, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and takes along with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the last state of that man becomes worse than the first. That is the way it will also be with this evil generation. While he was still speaking to the crowds, behold, his mother and brothers were standing outside, seeking to speak to him. Now someone said to him, Behold, your mother and your brothers are standing outside, seeking to speak to you. But Jesus answered the one who was telling him, and said, Who is my mother, and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Behold, my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven, he is my brother and sister and mother.